Estado na nga tunay, hindi po yung hindi bangkutin ng Delasal. Cebu City! ay naniniwala na bawat isa sa atin ay may kaluluwa. Yang mga komunista na yan, hindi nila inaadmiti na may kaluluwa ang tao, kaya parang manok na pinapatay yung mga tao. A nation took to the streets tonight to celebrate its victory. The dictator had fallen, the people conquered his palace. For a generation, it had been the forbidden city in the Philippines. Tonight, it was renamed Freedom Park. If you've ever wanted to know what a revolution looks like, feast your eyes on Manila tonight. But, you know, the Americans, the Americans, the Americans were intervening in that, uh, in that whole situation. The question is why EDSA? Mm. Who decided that the event must be in EDSA? Mm. Cory did not decide that. Mm. None of the Liberal Party people decide, decided that. They were all gone. They were in Cebu. While the drama in Manila was unfolding, Aquino was in the southern city of Cebu, continuing a post-election campaign advocating civil disobedience. Troops loyal to Marcos filed out of the palace. They were embraced as converts by the gathering crowd. There was pandemonium as word spread that the dictator was gone. There was very little bloodshed. Very little bloodshed. Very little bloodshed. Very little bloodshed. The day that started with two presidents and two sides ended with a coming together that mingled prayer and patriotism, which tonight were the same thing. They waved their flags, they kissed their flags. The Virgin Mary was everywhere. They tore down the barbed wire surrounding the palace and fashioned it into crowns of thorns. The stately portraits of the old regime were replaced late tonight by Hollywood-type posters of the new leaders, the new Philippines, starring Corazon Aquino. This was the revolution that smiled. We, we, we had the chance to prepare. So we were wondering why were we not, why did we not fight back? Mm. With, with, with force. And he said that would have been the beginning of a civil war. Yeah. God was with us because that event th turned without any bloodshed, turned out to be bloodless. No? Yes. Oh. Because, uh, I, because your father restrained himself. I, because your father restrained himself. Uh, many were advising him to. to yeah. I to read the book attack. of uh, Art Arvisa, oh, no? but, uh, but And I saw the, the restraint of the president. At a palace news conference, his top general argued with him. I understand you gave them orders to wait. I and, told uh, them to wait because... There are massing civilians near our troops, and we cannot keep on withdrawing. They asked us to withdraw yesterday. When I talked to Mr. Enrile, really, he said, you talked to you, we withdrew a little. My order is to disperse the crowd. We cannot withdraw all the time, Mr. President. Without must... shooting them. No, 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 hold on. You disperse the crowd without shooting them. I, I remember very well that it was General Allen. We, we remember we were waiting for the uh, American helicopters, American helicopters, American helicopters. Yeah. Because our, the presidential helicopters was also in uh, Malacanang Park. Yeah. 
but they had already been strafed. So, me, me tama na, so they were, but then the proposal was that they would send helicopters from Clark. They sent two big helicopters from Clark. And uh, I remember when we crossed Pasig River, uh, the, the officer who met us was General Allen. I rode to the uh, house of Josephine Kohanko, mm -hmm. the sister of Cory. Mm -hmm. Cory was there. And then I reported to Cory about my conversation with your dad, as well as my conversation with Wasworth and that the president, uh, your dad, was departing Malacanang. Cory did not know anything about uh, that event. Mm -hmm. She called Bosworth. And then I remember uh, Cory saying, shouted over the phone, no, I do not want him here. Yes. Let's take him out. That's it. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. That was in the middle of the night already. We were already in Clark. Yeah. The Americans were still, uh, were, did not know quite what to do with us. The or original arrangement is that we will be flown because, to, uh, to Ilocos. Because requested that from Bosworth. Mm -mm. So it was very much a decision at that time, na ayoko dyan. Basta stay, get, out of, get him out of the country was yeah. then Cory's uh, decision. Well, yeah, she, uh, nakinig sila kay Cory, yung mga Amerikano, because sabi niya, peremptory yung kanyang sabi. Mm -hmm. No, I do not want him here. I uh, take him out of the country. Well, like, that seems to that seems to be the same report that we got. And uh, actually, eventually, the Americans told us that we were actually said the instruction was that uh, not not to be brought anymore to Ilocos, but to be to be taken out of the country. So Marcos fled to Hawaii with his family and friends, landing on Oahu in February of 1986. The 89 people traveling in the Marcos party made the trip from Guam in an Air Force C-141 that touched down just after 11 this morning. Governor and Mrs. Ariyoshi and Commander of the Pacific Air Forces, General Robert Baisley and his wife. A frail-looking Marcos needed some help deplaning, but once off, the 68-year-old president in exile was able to walk slowly by himself. There was a warm greeting between the Ariyoshis and the Marcoses, the welcome complete with lays. Later, Ariyoshi told reporters he found Marcos to be in good spirits, relaxed and hoping to get some rest here. He did not think Marcos was depressed or bitter. I didn't get that from him. I didn't get the feeling that he felt bad about uh, having been, having to leave the country and being almost stripped from the presidency. I think that he feels that he uh, was happy that Things happened without any uh, real bloodshed. He was concerned about Filipinos being turned against Filipinos and a uh, lot of bloodshed, and he did not want to see that happen. It was a crowd that Imelda Marcos knew would be more than receptive. dress that she wore when she and her husband faced the cameras for a news conference at Hickam and she offered herself for press the flesh populism the crowd surged forward to envelop her in support to comfort her Cut off from their deep pockets and stuck in a diplomatic limbo, back in 1986, the Marcoses struggled to find a place to call home in Hawaii. How much you poison our mind. We are still loyal to him. He's the best president the Philippines has ever had. I was uh, dismayed when in my first uh, cabinet meeting with uh, Cory. He did not make any decision. He will say, oh, Tito, Gingona, Tito, ikaw naman, magsalita. Mon, ikaw, magsalita. Oh, Adoy. Ganun. Well, no decision. And I realized, finally, personally, I, I'm sorry to say this, but I realized I, in that first meeting that I had in that cabinet, that the president, that succeeded Jordan, did not know anything about governance. 
and it, uh, it, it showed afterwards. The, the, the ones governing the country were, was not Tory. Other people who were around there, they was uh, very fond of playing Bajong. Magmamadyong sila hanggang umaga na minsan eh. That's breakfast na, tapos uwi na siya. <laughs> His accomplishments are beyond imagination. No, they might not realize it now, but I'm very sure every Filipino will say that President Marcos was the greatest president, and history will prove this. Sabihin mo nga sa akin, masama ba akong tao?